Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. And I am wearing my finished M7730. I have finished it. I am amazed. It is a miracle because it feels like this one has taken me forever. It's like you're in a TV show and they've done like a seven year time jump and now it's 2027, but no, it's really still 2020. I know, and I am not Barbara Walters, by the way. So I am going to be walking you through how I made this very cute jacket with flounces on the waistline and sleeves. And no, this is not for me. It was a Christmas gift, but I'm about the same size as the recipient, so I'm gonna be your model today. Let's get the pattern envelope open. I'm making this jacket in a size 14. If you're new to sewing clothing, choose the size based on the measurements provided, not your typical ready-to-wear size. For the main fabric, a polyester rayon blend, lemon yellow boucle suiting. The lining is white rayon bemberg. Both fabrics are pre-washed and the lining is pressed. After looking at PatternReview.com, other makers of M7730 recommended drafting facing pieces for the lining. So I took this advice. Using tracing paper, I created new pattern pieces, which I detailed in a previous video. It wasn't as difficult as I was anticipating, so give it a shot. Time to cut out the fabric. Getting a large self-healing cutting mat has made my life so much easier. This one is 36 by 48 inches, and it sits next to a smaller 24 by 36 inch mat so I can easily spread out fabric on my work surface. Washers from the hardware store make budget-friendly pattern weights, and using a rotary cutter is faster compared to scissors. Pins are great for marking patterns with a water-soluble pen. My favorite sewing supplies are linked below in the description box. The bodice front has bust darts. After making the initial marks, I drew the lines in with a ruler. Let's sew these darts. Here's my method. Match up the lines on both sides and pin in place like this. Take it to the sewing machine and start stitching from the outside to the point using a small stitch length like 2.0. When you get to the point, sew right to the edge. Cut the threads longer with some slack and not a few times at the point. Snip off the excess thread. This is how the dart should look, but we're not done yet. Press the seam toward the bottom of the bodice with the tailor's ham. The pen marks will come off later when the jacket is washed. I made a pocket for the lining just by cutting two basic rectangles. Sew all around the edges, but leave space to turn it inside out. Then press the seams well. There's a whole video about this sewing method here on the channel if you want to learn more. Placement lines on the bodice lining will make sure the pocket is on straight. Pin together and sew the sides and bottom. Okay, now we're going to start constructing the main fabric pieces. The back is two pieces, pin right sides together. For the most part, we'll be sewing everything with a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press the seams open. Next, pin the front and back right sides together and sew the shoulder and side seams. Press the seams open on the tailor's ham. One of the reasons I wanted to make M7730 is because it has flounces on the bodice and sleeves. Really cute detail. It took me a while to wrap my head around the instructions, so hopefully this video helps guide you through. Starting with the sleeve flounce, mark a 5 8 inch line on both sides of the lining. Fold and press them in. Pin the lining to main fabric right sides together. The fold should be facing out. Sew the top and bottom edges, leaving the sides open. Trim the seam allowance down to about a quarter inch. This is gonna be a little tedious, but turn the sleeve flounce right side out. Press well, use some steam and make sure the edges are pushed out to the seams. The raw side ends will look like this, with the lining folded in. Join both edges right sides together and stitch the main fabric, making sure not to catch the lining. Press the seam allowance open. Tuck the seams into the lining. There is some hand sewing involved with this pattern and this is the first part. Using a ladder or slip stitch, close up the lining and you'll have no raw edges visible. Now onto the bodice flounce, which is six pieces total. Three main fabric and three lining. Start pinning the pieces. Sew them together, press the seam allowances open. In one of the lining sections, I used a basting stitch part of the way. Later on, I'll show you why I did this. Pin the flounce pieces right sides together. Sew all of the sides completely closed. 
Trim the seam allowance down to about a quarter inch. Snip off the corners, but don't cut through the stitch line. Back to the basting stitches, get out a seam ripper and remove them. This is going to create an opening for you to turn the flounce right side out. Press well. Use steam and be sure the edges are pushed out to the seams. Hand sew that opening closed, again using a ladder stitch. It's like it was never there. Let's get to the sleeves. Press the seam allowance in advance. This will make construction easier toward the end. Do this for both the main and lining fabrics. Because my main fabric is thicker, I used a tailor's board for sharper creases. E-stitch the top edge of the sleeve in between the circle pattern markings. Do two rows within the seam allowance. I usually do a quarter inch and about a half inch in. This step's purpose is for ease. Get it E-stitch in sewing the armhole. Leave the threads longer and pull gently and the sleeve cap will begin to form. Pin the sleeve seam right sides together, then sew all of these pieces. stitch the upper edge of the flounce pieces along the stitching line. The pattern has placement lines for the flounces. Mark them with an air or water soluble pen. Pin the flounce pieces on the sleeves and bodice. I really like silk pins as they don't leave holes in finer fabric. Sew on the flounces. It makes more sense to sew the sleeve flounce pieces onto the sleeves before you sew them to the armholes. If you do these steps out of order, it will be much more difficult to sew the flounces on after the fact. Because to fit the sleeve onto my machine's free arm, I had to insert the shoulder side into it. Repeat these steps to attach the larger flounce onto the bodice. Okay, back to the sleeves and the armhole. Line up and pin the underarm seams and the shoulder seams with the middle circle pattern marking. Use a lot of pins, and this will prevent puckering. Sew the sleeve to the armhole. Go slow and take advantage of your machine's free arm again. Your sleeve cap should look like this. Trim the seam allowance on the armhole, then press toward the sleeve away from the shoulder. For some reason I didn't get this on camera, but I also did basting stitches on the side seam of the bodice lining. Take a seam ripper and open up that portion. Like the flounce piece, that's to create an opening to turn the jacket. Here's the finished lining with facing pieces. Now comes the part that looks tricky, but really isn't, sewing the lining to the outer jacket. Start lining up and pinning the edges right sides together, including the neckline, center front, and bottom. Do your best to match up the seam lines. You'll use a lot of pins. Sew the jacket completely closed all along the perimeter. Trim the seam allowance and snip off the corners. Turn the entire thing right side out through that opening and the lining. Use a point turner or something similar like a chopstick to push out corners and edges. Press everything really well. Pin the open lining and hand stitch closed. The last step is to position the sleeve and lining at the cuffs. Pin them together. I let the main fabric extend past the lining 
so it didn't show. Hand sew the cuffs using that same ladder stitch from earlier. After finishing, I gently laundered the jacket to remove all of the markings and press the entire garment. Take a look at the final result. Okay, so I know that was a lot there. This video was shot over, no joke, like two to three weeks. In fact, this was the only handmade Christmas gift I was able to get through this year. I had much higher aspirations. They did not happen due to some other personal things going on. And of course, my lack of realistic timelines, but hey, happens to the best of us. I'm actually really, really pleased with the finished item. I think it looks fairly professional. There are some things I could have done better. In hindsight, I may have wanted to do something more with the openings at the front because they are curling a little bit just because the fabric I'm using, which is a poly rayon tweed suiting, it is a little bit heavier. The instructions called you to underline as many seams as you could, but I didn't really find that too possible just because I did end up changing the way the lining was constructed. So I think that would have been very difficult. I tried to press, press these like the crap out of it. Didn't really work too well, but you know, I tried my best. Overall, I think the finished product is pretty close to something I, I would buy in a store. I think this is super cute. You could wear it with a lot of different things. You could dress it up like I am with a dress or you could dress it down with jeans and like a t-shirt. Maybe if you're going to the movies or something or if you're just going out to dinner. And I don't know if this is a thing, but I'm gonna coin a phrase called pattern fatigue, which is where you're working on a pattern for so long, you get kind of tired of it and you just want it to be over. I found this pattern very enjoyable, but just it just took me so long. And I'm not saying anything about the pattern. I think it's more user error here. I'm just very slow. And whenever I'm doing a pattern for the first time, I have a hard time grasping some of the techniques at first. And then I just, it just takes me forever. But overall, I thought the instructions were fairly clear. There's not a lot I would change. Again, I think doing a facing for the lining was a winner idea. So for everyone on that pattern review website, thank you. That was a solid suggestion. I'm really glad I took it. I would actually like to make this pattern again, but with my tracker, you know, who knows? It might be another five to 10 years. I would rate this pattern, you know, if on a scale of one to 10, probably an eight. I think it's solid, probably for an intermediate sewist. I, again, would not have this be your first sewing project. There were some techniques in here I would consider more intermediate to advanced. And doing the flounces took quite a bit of work and it was fairly time consuming. If it did not have those features, I think this would have been a much quicker sew than it was. But the flounces are, I think, what adds the flair to this jacket. You know what I'm saying here? I hope you found this video helpful if you're sewing this pattern or a similar jacket pattern. And if you're looking for something else to watch on this channel, I've got some other garment sewing videos, including a collared dress shirt. I also have a more in-depth video on how I drafted my own facing for the lining. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'm really looking forward to making more videos here in 2020. I'm Jennifer with The Sewing Report. See you guys next time.